Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. I want to get straight into the Word of God and just recap once again on last week. Our hashtag for today is conquest. Say me conquest. And how do we conquer? We conquer through the blood. Say me we conquer through the blood. So Revelation 12 and verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the Bible says they did not love their lives to the death. In the Passion Translation, it says they conquered him completely. Say with me, completely. completely. They conquered him completely through the blood of the Lamb and the powerful word of his testimony, they triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives even when faced with death. I'll say that again. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives even when faith faced with death. Turn to your neighbor, say your neighbor, stop being so clingy. Right, you're clinging on, you're holding on for dear life, it's like survival. But even when death faced them, the Bible says that in in actual fact in the New Living Translation, they were not afraid to die. So to get to that place where you're not even scared of death, where you can say, death, where is your sting? (laughs) Death has been swallowed up in victory. Are, Are you hearing me here today? But that only comes through Understanding the power of the blood of Christ within your life. And he took bread and he broke it and gave thanks in verse 24 of 1 Corinthians 11. And he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Say with me, remembrance. Okay, because we, we tend to forget. I said, we tend to forget. And when you forget, you become clingy. Some of you were clingy this morning. On the way to church, you were clingy. Thank God you've already been delivered. I haven't even preached yet because God has done something in your life already. You understand? But you see, we tend to forget the grace of God. We tend to forget what God has done within our lives. So he says, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is my, this cup is the new covenant of my, in my blood. Do this whenever you drink, when? In remembrance of me. Every one of those seven places where Jesus shed blood is a place where we obtain the victory and therefore we do not have to be clingy and love our own lives. Are, are you hearing me here today? So that's the frame of mind. God wants you to be free, completely free. He wants you to live in the abundant life. Amen. But what we did see, we see in 2 Timothy, the opposite of that. When you don't have confidence in the blood, when you're trying to overcome in your own way, through your own style, through your personality, through your education, through your intellect, through your thinking, through your opinion, what happens is, He says, in the last day, in the perilous times that come, he says, verse two of 2 Timothy 3, verse two, it says, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Opposite of unthankful means feeling entitled. I deserve I have the right to. He says in the last days, that will be the buzzword. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal and violent, despisers of good, traitors. In other words, There's a price. You can be bought. Hello. Ask your neighbor, can you be bought? See, what's your price? Traitors. 
You see, you're loyal up to a point. But when there's a business deal and you have to throw someone under the bus, you understand? Then your business, your money comes. Why? Because you're a lover of money. You understand? So there's a price. There's a price. There's a price for betrayal. There's a price being a traitor. It might be the beauty of somebody else within your marriage. What's your price? Ask your neighbor, what's your price? You'll do things you never thought or dreamed of you would do for a buck. In the name of being a good business person. Traitors, headstrong, stubborn, haughty, proud, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Listen to this, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. You've got the form, you've got the image. You've got the marketing going. You've got the lie. Come on somebody, you've got the form. Yo, we can market. We can present ourselves that which we are not. Are, are you hearing me? We've got a form of godliness. But we deny the power. We look spiritual. We can say amen at the right place. We can raise our hand when we need to. We can korabasata. Hello, somebody. But when you look at your lifestyle, when we look at the character, when we look at your life, it's denying the power of the God that dwells within you. How can you come and korabasa and prophesy and say, so say the Lord, and then you lie and exaggerate? There's a form, there's an image. There's a presentation of spirituality, but you deny the power thereof. The New Living Translation says they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. You reject the power because you want to make yourself. Say with me, there is no change without an exchange. You can't have God and be God. There's no change without an exchange. And that's what happened when Adam and Eve sinned. We looked at, they went, and when God came and walked, because God has always initiated fellowship, He made us in His image, and He's always initiated fellowship to, for us to be able to uh, uh, spend time and concur with God on His level. He's brought us up to His level. But Adam and Eve wanted their own level their own understanding. Are you hearing me? The devil lied to them and said, if you disobey God, you'll be at his level. But you see, what they did by disobeying is they made themselves their own God. And when God came down to visit and spend time with them in the, in, in, in the cool breeze of the evening, the Bible says in Genesis 3 and, 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 and verse 8, that they went and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. See, people hide themselves from the presence of that which is godly. They hide themselves in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they hid themselves, and the first thing that God asks is, where are you? The first thing He asks is not, what did you do? The first thing He asks is, where are you? Genesis 3 verse 7. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. In other words, they worked the whole night. That means they worked. They worked. They worked. To do what? They worked to clothe themselves with themselves. See, that's what happens when God is not God of your life. You have to clothe yourself. You have to create your own image with fig leaves. And that's what they did. They made clothes. The whole night. You see, you've got to work for your salvation. Either you can receive the salvation from God or you have to work, baby. And you're going to work. And you're going to be stressed out. Because people are going to come against you and they're going to tarnish your image and then you need to work again. And you need to work just to show somebody, just to show somebody I'm worthy. Like a, like a little doggy. 
you know, that's just, just all a little cat that just needs a tap on the bank. So, mm, 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 you go, yeah, yeah. Then you go, tap, tap, to go. Uh, uh. You become a slave to the pat on the back by your husband, by the pat on your back by your wife, by the pat on the back by your boss, by the pat on your back just by anybody. And we like people running around just to find somebody that will just accept us. You, you know, like little, girl, he, he, then, and then when they pat you, go, uh, uh. and you work sewing fig leaves, fig leaves, clothing yourself with yourself, clothing yourself with yourself. Are you hearing me here today? In Genesis 3 and 21, it says, God make tunics of skin and clothe them. What did God make? Of what? Of skin. For it to be skin, something had to die. Something had to die. Blood had to flow. So that be blood. You see, already in Genesis chapter 3, the father was pointing to the cross. Ready in Genesis chapter 3, the blood was flowing. Ready in, in Genesis chapter 3, God had already made a plan for the righteousness of man. Hallelujah. And although we're working to make ourselves a plan, we've got to understand that he made, he made the plan for us. And therefore, Jesus died. But we've got to understand one thing. And that's what I want to just throw in a little bit here today. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 36, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. I'll say it again. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. You see, within our life, you can decide how you want to live because in everything that you do, you're going to sow. You see, God created heaven and earth once and God made and God made and God made. And then from then, everything that developed then was seed and harvest. Everything from then is seed. Everything works with seed. But here's the thing about seed. You see, a seed has to be planted in the ground for it to grow, for it to come alive. And this is what Adam and Eve tried to do. They tried to sow fig leaves. Who knows that fig leaves die after a while? Who knows that fig leaves has got an expiration date? Who wears clothes? Who knows that clothes has an expiration date? See, everything we have comes and then it dies. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? So what happened is, is, is they, were, they were making and clothing themselves with corruptible things. And my question to you today, what are you clothing yourself with? What are you clothing yourself with? Are you clothing yourself with the blood of Jesus, the incorruptible seed of the Word through the blood of Christ? Or are you clothing yourself with corruptible things? Because what you sow, you shall. I can't hear you. What you sow, you shall. You shall reap. And therefore it says in John chapter 12 and Verse 24, listen to this. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, what does it do? It produces much grain. See, we want to produce without dying. You produce zero unless you die. Listen to this, verse 25. He who loves his life will lose it. Tell your neighbor, stop being clingy. Stop being clingy. He who loves his life will lose it. Lover of your own life. 
trying to stay alive, trying to be, trying to be what you perceive. We need lover of your own life. The Bible says he who loves his life will lose it, but he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, verse 26, let him follow me and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Are you hearing me yet today? Amen. So how do we do that? It's through the blood of Christ. Yeah. Now, now, we've been looking and we've been speaking on finances the last couple of weeks and stuff. But, you know, we read the, this verse in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10. Who supplies seed? God supplies seed to the sown, bread for eat. And he says that he might supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the food of righteousness. What, is, what, what, what multiplies? The seed you have sown. What seed are we sowing? What seed are we sowing? Are we sowing corruptible seed or incorruptible seed? Corruptible seed means it's going to blow up in your face. It's going to deteriorate. And like I said with, with Eve, you know, if God had left them, they would have probably taken those leaves and made and probably eventually got a clothing line that said fig. <laughs> and they probably would have started a business called fig clothing. You see, and then out of that started making money because there's a lot of naked people that need to be clothed. So this business incorruptible. So what happens, you start clothing yourself incorruptible. You start clothing yourself in money. You start clothing yourself in that which deteriorates, which you can't take with you anyways. Now you clothe yourself. And then they would have probably got proud and say, look, I'm successful because I've got a clothing line that anyway dies that you can't wear after a year. But at least that's repeat business. So the values are different. So when it comes to understanding, what are you sowing? Now, now, now let me just quickly run down to verse six. It says, but I say this, he who sows sparingly will reap, sparingly, 2 Corinthians 9, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So that which you're sowing, if you sow it sparingly, will reap sparingly. But if you sow a lot of it, what's gonna happen? You're gonna reap a lot of it. So he says in verse seven, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Let each one sow as he purposes in his heart. That word purpose means to intend for oneself. What one intends to bring about. In other words, the outcomes you are looking for. The determined result. When you're looking for purpose, as you purpose in your heart, that purpose means what do you want in the end? Because that determines what you sow and that determines how much you sow. And he says purpose is where? In your heart. So what are you looking for? Now no, this is not, not got to do with money. This has to do with heart. Because where your treasure is, there your Heart is also. So this is not about money. So this applies to anything that you sow. Anything that you sow. Therefore he says that, he says, now listen to this verse eight. He says, and God is able. So with me, God is able. God is able. So it doesn't mean he's going to do it. He's able to do it. Doesn't mean he's going to do it. You don't hear me. God's able, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's got to be a trigger. God is able to do what? He's able to make all grace. What? All grace. What? All grace abound toward you that you having all sufficiency in all things. Every Every, every aspect of your life, everything that you do, all sufficiency, the wisdom you need, the grace you need, the resources you need, the team you need, you understand? All sufficient, all things may have an abundance for every good work. You see, God is able if, if the heart is right. 
if the purpose is right. And what is the purpose? An abundance for what? Every, every good work. Say to me, every good work. Say to me, every good work. Shout out, say to me, every good work. You see, so it's the purpose of God, right? Now, therefore he says, in 1 Peter 2 and verse 1, he says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all speaking. What are you sowing? Are you sowing malice? Are you wicked? You see, what you sow, you're going to? You're going to reap. You can go on and gossip day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, and think that you will not reap destruction. You can't slander. That's why it says, lay aside all deceit. Listen to me, you cannot lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And don't think it's not gonna catch up to you somewhere. <laughs> now look, God's got grace and it's available to you. And you know what? And we will help you when you're in your mess, it's just you don't need to go there. When your kids are not serving God and they're on drugs and they're struggling, why? Because you did not believe God. Now don't be sad. Listen to what I'm saying. The inconsistency, whatever you sow, don't think your malice, your slandering, and your offense. You get upset at every little thing. You're so full of yourself. Now you sow the seed of bitterness. The Bible says you dare go to bed with offense in your life. It's like going to bed with the devil. It says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. But you'll go lie on your pillow and you and the devil have a conversation. You say, oh... Oh, I, they, they didn't have the right. They stole my money. Who did they think they are? And you're thinking murder. You're thinking, how do I get? You're thinking revenge. And then you talk it. You get up and you start talking. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Carefully. Do not think that when you sow those seeds that it's not going to grow. The same seed same soil that feeds the heart, that feeds the good seed, feeds the weed. Are you hearing me here today? Put aside envies and jealousies. You can't every time be envious of somebody. And when things like that crock up and you want to lie, you've got you've to take control and go to the cross. And that's why the Bible says, therefore he eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Look, look at verse 28. But let each man, let a man do what? Examine, examine himself. But let a man do what? Examine his wife. Let each man do what? Examine, Examine his wife. <laughs> Examine his husband. Who husband? You see, we examine everybody else. We sit in church and we're thinking, yo, if only my husband was here. If only my wife was here. 
If only my children could have heard this message. And we're thinking the message is for everybody else. Oh, my husband needs this. My husband needs this. My wife needs this. Oh, my children, my grandchildren. Oh, if we could just get the president to hear this. You understand? Everybody must hear it except you. Yeah. But let a man do what? Examine himself. You've got to check your heart because you are sowing and you are sowing and you are sowing. And you know what? I sit, I sit with a lot of people. I counsel a lot of people every week. And I encourage them and I help them. I rebuke them in what they need to do. And you know what? They don't understand that I'm not God. The consequences that come on life you got nothing to fear from me. I'm not the one you need to fear. But there's seed time and harvest. So if you're sowing bitterness and a hatred in your life, you're sowing those seeds, it will multiply back. And if you sow it bountifully, you will reap bountifully as you give, as you sow, as you purpose in your heart. What is going on in your heart? Ask your neighbor, what's going on in your heart? Goodness. You come and you worship and you, and you cry, and then you're out that door, then what happens? Then what happens? Are you hearing me? Yes. You've got to understand that within your, you, we've got to examine, we've got to examine the heart because you sow seed and you sow seed. Let me tell you that seed is going to come up and it's going to multiply back to you. Hallelujah. Therefore, let a man examine himself. So let eat of the bread and drink of the cup for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. Listen to this verse 30. For this reason there are many weak and sick among you and many sleep. That's another word for die. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people that are dead before their time because they're carrying bitterness within their heart. There are many people that I've prayed for and they want healing within their life. And I say, do you have unforgiveness? A lot of people are carrying illness and disease because of unforgiveness they've been carrying within your life. It is a proven scientific fact that it affects the physical. So what he's saying He's saying, it's not that God's cursing you because you do stupid stuff. He's saying, everything works through seed. So you're sowing seed of bitterness and offense and you're full of yourself trying to clothe yourself and, you, and, and you're insecure and you're just trying to get people to like you. So, so you exaggerate and you lie and when somebody does something wrong, you're offended and you're carrying all these things because you're insecure in yourself and you're clothing yourself with yourself. But the more you do that, the more destruction you sow into your life. And he said, that's why many of you, you struggle you got sickness in your life. And many of you die before your time. You're supposed to live your four score, three score, ten. But you see, because you've been carrying that within your life, these things, let me tell you, and I'm, I'm, I'm imploring you today. You're sowing seed. You're a schemer. You do business and you scheme. You lie to people, you know, and by lying, I don't mean you, because you got this form of godliness, so you don't actually lie, you just withhold information. And then you call yourself a good business person, but you're a liar. Let me tell you, you can't live like that and think that doesn't catch up with you. 
No, what's the, what's, the, what's the remedy, Bert? Is it to say, okay, now I must be a good... No, none of us can be good. Out of ourselves, none of us have that capacity. How do we conquer? How do we conquer? How do we conquer? Through the blood. Therefore, he's let each and every one of you examine yourself. He says... Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be, we would not be judged. Are you hearing me here today? Sure, I've left a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have enough time. There's so much I want to say more about seed. I'll continue next week. Is that all right? Are you hearing me here today? I'm not here to preach a nice message to you. I'm here to help you. You can't, listen to me, you can't go on losing your temper like that and think there's not repercussions. And say, well, that's who that is. Ach, this is my who papa is. Well, that's how daddy, no, no. Daddy needs to grow up. Are you hearing me? Well, that's how mommy is. You know, it's just like, you know, she's emotional. No, mommy needs to grow up and get over herself and conquer. Are you hearing me? You can't be depressed when your husband comes home. You can't be depressed when your children come home. Can't. You need to grow up. You gotta understand there's consequences. And there's a generation after you that needs you. So you can't be full of yourself and put everything on yourself. You're not the savior of the world, mom. You need Jesus in your life. You're not the savior of the world. And by the way, mom, everything's not your fault either. So we go to God. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And just the way I just want you to stand to your feet and understand we need all grace. I said we need all grace. Yes. We need all grace to abound to us in all things. We need all sufficiency in all things. We need it within our lives. But it comes from God. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I have been redeemed from the power of the enemy. Say it again, by the blood of Jesus, I have been redeemed from the power of the enemy. Are you hearing me? Say it be violence, deceit, having no control, has no power over me. By the blood of Jesus, I've been redeemed. Depression has no right over me. I have been redeemed. Offense has no right in my life. Bitterness has no right. Envy has no right. I have been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed. By the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed. I am changed now and continually from all my sin. By the blood of Jesus, I am justified and God sees me as though I have never sinned. By the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified. I am set apart for the purpose of God. I am chosen by God. I am appointed, anointed. I have an assignment. I'm appointed, I'm anointed. I have an assignment. I'm appointed, I'm anointed. I have an assignment.
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord as a sign of surrender. Become aware of His presence here today. God has given you the ability to conquer. Stop being like Jacob. Your plans, your plans are going to lead to destruction. Being full of yourself, thinking you know your stubbornness. But you know what? If you come before God today, you put your things before God, God says, if you ask me for wisdom, I will give it to you. I will give you wisdom. I will give you grace. I will give you patience. And whatever that is in your mind, just there where you are, your sin, I want you to denounce it right now in the name of Jesus. Just denounce it. You know those things you've been struggling with. It might be deceit, it might be insecurity or guilt or whatever it is. And you know it just, it just controls you. It might be losing your temper, insecurity, whatever it might be, you know what it is. Just stay where you are. Just give it to the Lord. And say, Lord, I need you to change me. I need you to cleanse me. Forgive me and cleanse me, Lord. Bible says if you confess your sin, God says He's faithful and just to forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Just there where you are. Let the Holy Spirit change your heart. Let Him change your heart. Let Him change your heart. Just there where you are. Let Him change you. Let Him change you. Right now, let it go. Right now. Say, Lord, change me, Lord. Change me. Through the blood of Christ, through the blood of Christ, you do the work within my heart. You change my heart, O oh Lord. Come and shout it out to the Lord. Say, change my heart, O oh Lord. Say, with, say, create within me a clean heart, Lord. An upright spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You hear our heart, you hear our prayers today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you cleanse us. One drop of your blood, your redemption, the price is paid. Thank you, Lord. You take control. Our sin is covered. It's not our righteousness. We can't work for it, Lord. It's not our works. But you clothe us. Clothe us today. We need you, Lord. In our marriages, in our families, we need you, Lord. We look at the consequence of trying to do things out of ourselves, And we see the destruction, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you in our lives and everything we are. Take control of our families. Take control of our finances. Take control of our future. Take control of our nation, Lord. All in your hands. Clothe us. Clothe us, Lord. In Jesus' name. 3C Live presents its fourth album, Good To Me. With songs like Perfect Love. First. Great Exchange. Umu Segim. Three C Live's fourth release, Good to Me, available on all digital platforms, including iTunes and Google Play Music. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 112345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much 
much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.